Back to My Garden, Episode 53. Welcome to Back to My Garden. Discover your passion for gardening. Here's Dave Ledoux. This just in, my top 20 favorite garden writers, and they're all women. Visit www.backtomygarden.com front slash top 20 garden writers. Attention garden lovers. Do you want to save time, save money, and have your most amazing garden ever? Receive free tips, strategies, and gardening techniques from passionate gardeners around the world. Join the VIP club for free today at www.backtomygarden.com front slash VIP. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world when you listen to this. I'm Dave Ledoux, and welcome to another edition of Back to My Garden. And today, fantastic guest. We're going to head out to the uh, middle of the country. Our guest, Amy, teaches do-it-yourself on a budget. She's an amazing blogger, and she blogs actively on indoor gardening, fall gardens, seeds and bulbs, and garden maintenance. And she even knows more than a dozen uses for extra zucchini. So without any further ado, let me welcome to the show from Minneapolis, Minnesota, Amy Androhovich. Amy, welcome to the show. Thanks, Dave. Thanks for having me. Glad you could join us. And I gave you a brief introduction, and I want to hear your story. And I'm sure our guests and listeners want to get to know you a little better, Amy. Take a minute or two. Share with us a little bit about your background and how you got into gardening. Uh, well, I grew up gardening. Uh, I grew up in Minneapolis, Minnesota, and uh, my dad was a big gardener, and my mom was bit, really big into house plants. So I kind of got a mix of both of those genes. So in the summertime, I I enjoy gardening and and still share that passion with my dad. And in the wintertime, I'm got a ton of indoor uh, plants, and so I, I'm constantly doing gardening during the through the whole year. Uh, with plants indoors as well. So that's kind of my background. Got it from both my parents. So Fantastic. So you have two green thumbs. <laughs> yep. Year-round gardening, we're going to talk about that. Now, Amy and I are visiting here on Skype, and we're recording this for you now. The old, those of you driving or jogging or at the gym, please don't try to take notes. Keep both hands on the wheel. I'm going to put the links to Amy's blog on the, on the site at uh, backtomygarden.com. Amy's got an incredible resource site at www.getbusygardening.com. And make sure you follow her on Twitter at GetBusyGardenIn. So that's G-E-T-B-U-S-Y-G-A-R-D-E-N-I-N. And share Amy's stuff on Twitter. Uh, Amy, I consider you an experienced gardener because you've been doing it a big deal, a big part of your life. But what was your first garden like as an adult? Do you remember that? Well, I through all through college, I struggled with trying to figure out how to garden without having a yard. And so, my dad actually gave me part of his garden during uh, part, you know, during the summers when I'd be home from college. So I had a little area in his garden that I could plant whatever I wanted there. And then I also did a lot of that's when I really started doing a lot of container gardening and trying to figure out how to grow things in containers and out on a, you know, on a deck or on a back patio of an apartment I lived in or wherever I was or inside. I grew as much as I could inside. So my very first garden of my own when I bought my first house Actually, it's a, I live in suburbia now, so the, there was no garden. It was all green grass um, and no trees or anything. So I started off digging up some sod and put in some tomato plants. And, you know, 12 years later, <laughs> I've got most of the sod dug up now. So, <laughs> wow. so you started with a, literally a blank slate. Yep. A blank canvas. Wow. Yep. <laughs> now, a friend told me in the Minneapolis that the house developers take away the good topsoil when you buy a property. Did you find the, your, you know, when you dug up the sod that you could literally plant right away, or did you have to bring in some topsoil? Well, I, you know, one of the um, things that I really focus on is budget gardening, because when I started out, I didn't have any money, and so I really, I couldn't afford to, you know, buy topsoil. I literally had a shovel and, and that I borrowed from my dad, and he helped me dig the sod up, and we planted directly in the ground. So, <laughs> I mean, the topsoil isn't that terrible here, but the sa the soil is very sandy. So you get 
a couple inches underneath that topsoil and it is like beach sand. So, um, I, I, you know, since then have amended my soil quite a bit with compo- my own compost, but then I just plant it directly in the ground to see what happens. <laughs> Fantastic. I love it. You just won some <laughs> fans because, A, we have a whole bunch of container gardener city dwellers listening to the podcast. And I want to say hello to all the uh, listeners in Japan. We're now in 26 countries listening to this. Wow. Yeah. Fantastic. Yeah, so uh, konnichiwa to my friends in Japan who are gardening. <laughs> so, Amy, you, you dug it up with a shovel and you threw in some tomato plants. What was the first season like for you? Uh, better than expected, actually. I, I My tomatoes did really well. I also got a bunch of um, – I, I later that summer dug up another area where I wanted to put in start putting in perennials. And so my dad, of course – shared perennials from his garden with me. So I put a bunch of perennials in one corner and some tomatoes and a couple of other vegetables in the other corner. And, uh, I, I mean, they did really well back then there were no trees. So everything got full sun all day long. And I was actually pleasantly surprised how well my garden did that year. I didn't have, I had pretty low expectations, but things did well. My dad's uh, touch helped, I think. <laughs> It's interesting. Great gardeners are often taught by other great gardeners, aren't they? Right. <laughs> good, good. And now let, let's talk about this season because uh, you're in zone, is it 4B? Yes. Zone 4B. So you have, a, you have all the seasons. Yes. <laughs> yes, we do. What kind of year did you have for your garden? Did you get to uh, play, uh, garden a lot this year? This has actually been one of the toughest years that I've had since I've uh, had, had this bought this house and gardened on my own. Actually, the last two years have been really bad. But this year, we, we had a very cold and rainy spring. We actually had record-breaking flooding in July, June and July. And uh, so, uh, you know, the cold weather vegetables like my broccoli and my cauliflower and my kale and all of those, I've actually had have been great. They've been better than I've ever had. I've, I've had more cauliflower and broccoli than I've ever had. But on the other hand, my tomatoes and, and the peppers and the squash uh, weren't very happy with all that rain. So this is the worst year I've ever had with tomatoes, unfortunately. <laughs> but. You're right in that dab smack in the middle of that polar vortex, right? <laughs> that everyone was talking about. Yes, <laughs> unfortunately, it's a very, very, I think it was the coldest winter in 50 years or some ridiculous thing. I don't know. <laughs> it was terrible. <laughs> and when you when you say coldest in Minnesota, that means a lot. Yeah, it was really, really cold. The cold, well, obviously the coldest winter I have, I remember ever. <laughs> so yeah, an amazing season for broccoli and a bad one for tomatoes. Exactly. Yeah, I guess you can't have it all. <laughs> I'm not going to be prejudiced towards vegetables, but I know some people uh, are more on the tomato side of the equation than broccoli. Yep. Yep. Did you learn anything from your garden this summer? Um. Well, I uh, I learned that. Well, because we just uh, we just got a community garden plot, so I was grew squash at the community garden this year for the first time. And I definitely learned that community garden is a whole different <laughs> way of gardening because I think every single bug that is possible is is uh, infests the community garden. So I, I had dealt with squash bugs for the first time in my growing in my gardening years, and so I learned that squash bugs are a major pain. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> that's that's different. The Brits over in England, they have allotment gardening. Same idea. Uh-huh. Uh, did you get to meet any of the other characters, any of the other gardeners, and did a little community develop? Yeah, you know, I, it was that was one part that I really enjoyed was the that I did get to meet other people. But for some reason, every time we go up there, it seems like there's not a lot of people up there. So the the community piece of it that I was really excited about and expecting uh, didn't wasn't wasn't as strong as I expected that it was going to be. <laughs> but I did get to meet some really cool people, so nice. that's nice, yeah. I think some gardeners uh, grow through neglect. They just put it in the ground and see what happens. Right. <laughs> that's part of the problem with the community garden is they neglect it, and, and then all of a sudden there's bugs and disease spreading everywhere. <laughs> but oh well. 
friend of mine's a kindergarten teacher. And every kid brings every germ, and, and pretty soon the whole class has about 15 different kinds of colds. <laughs> yeah. And I, I'm, I'm, I think it's the same with community gardens. Is It brings a new challenge, and uh, you get weird spots on the leaves of your tomatoes, and in your case, squash bugs. Yep, absolutely. Did you have a combat uh, strategy, or did you? was it a losing battle? No, actually, I did have a compact strategy strategy and um you know i read early early uh, it was a couple of years ago actually that na- uh, i said i mean i never know how to pronounce it but is it nastrodium the flower is um uh, is a good uh, uh companion plant for squash and it's supposed to repel the squash bug and um so this year i planted a whole because i had he- i had heard from other people that the squash bug was really bad at the community garden so i planted a whole bunch of nasturtium seeds in the garden and there was one area where they didn't grow and that interesting enough was the area where the squash bugs were the worst and so i um i didn't have a huge area that i had to fight but it was pretty much confined to that one area and i used soapy water and um sprayed the, then they that k- kills them very quickly the nymphs and the adults are killed very quickly by soapy water and so that was my strategy and every time i saw eggs i destroyed them and i got the upper hand and i i won the battle so i was pretty happy about that yeah that's gold amy that's really good tips that's uh, <laughs> companion gardening tips that's good yes ah, people listen to this for that kind of wisdom <laughs> So I could just picture you in a big floppy uh, flowery hat with a spray bottle of soap and water just going at it. Uh, yeah, out there every day for a while there. It was <laughs> but between that and the squash borer, I, yeah, I, it was a battle for squash this year, I'll tell you that much. Uh, what brought you the most joy in your garden? This year? or yeah, uh, yeah, what brought you the most joy this year in your garden? Um, you know, this year I kind of took took a, a little bit of a, of a year off. I mean, I still had my vegetables and all of my basic maintenance, but I didn't do any large new projects this year. So it was kind of nice just to sit back and relax and enjoy the gardens this year more than I have in the past. So I think that that was a good thing for me is take kind of taking a little bit of a break and just you know, being able to enjoy it rather than constantly being out there working and not really having that time to enjoy what I've done over the years. So that was one thing. I think that was the main thing that brought me the most enjoyment this year. I understand. You know, when it rains and you're not in the garden, it's like <laughs> you're on the blueprint and you're drawing out new beds. And Right. I moved four yards of dirt last week by wheelbarrow for my wife. Wow. <laughs> I understand completely. That's a good workout. <laughs> oh yeah, it, well, a lot of it was compost. We uh, we have raised beds too, and the nitrogen and it just is every year. It's uh, we do the chemistry lab tests where you put the soil in the little test tubes and put in the powder to measure everything. The NPK. Wow. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we had some really bad beds with two, like the pH was nearly eight, and nothing would grow in them. Oh, okay. And uh, my friend Annie Haven says, when in doubt, check the soil. Yep. <laughs> That's great advice. So you're 12 years in the same garden. What is gardening for you now? Is it physical? Is it the food? Is it more uh, an emotional thing? For me, it's yeah, it's definitely it's relaxing for me. It's kind of like my therapy, and it's rewarding, yep, yeah, because I get the... I get to enjoy the flowers, I get the vegetables, I get all of the, you know, all of the, the harvest from my garden. So it's, those are those are definitely the main things and the reason why. I mean, I really just, it's my passion, you know, and, I, and to be able to indulge in that passion as much as I get to is just, is just really great. What I love about your blog is your teaching. You're sharing so generously. How did you get into blogging? How long have you been blogging? Uh, what have you discovered along the way? I started my blog in 2009. I'm actually coming up on my five-year anniversary here in a couple of days. Um, I started blogging because I, I found that I was getting a lot of the same questions over and over from friends and family. And so I thought, well, I'm just going to start writing this stuff down. And then when somebody asks me a question, I'll just send them a link to the post that I wrote about that. you know, Or I'll write a post about it and... And then I'll have that. It's kind of almost kind of like a diary 
slash helping friends and family. And then, um, then I started getting followers and I started following other blogs and really kind of getting into the whole blogging community. And I found that I really loved it and, and decided to, to, you know, just blog as much as I could. And especially in the winter time, really put myself into that. And, and, um, I, I, you know, I've learned a lot from that. I've learned a ton from that and all the blogs that I follow and all the, I mean, there's just a ton of gardening blogs out there and it's really great to see other people what they're doing their perspective what people do in different zones I've learned a lot over the years of blogging just about different growing zones you know you you live in the same place your whole life and you garden in the same place you really get focus you know you really get a a narrow focus on what you deal with you don't even really think about what people in Texas or California deal with or other growing zones that are completely opposite so it's, that's really interesting, and you know, so I really enjoy other people's experiences. Fantastic. Now, for those of you driving, make sure after you get home, check out GetBusyGardening.com. And Amy shares so, like, it's, it's more than a blog now. It's turned into a resource site. What caught my eye was the, uh, the blog post you wrote about uses for zucchini. And you have a good sense of humor. I love it. Because normally <laughs> this time of year... You're, everyone's got way too much, and uh, you know you can't give it away fast enough. Yeah. <laughs> Except we had a terrible zucchini year. Did you? <laughs> no females, all male flowers. Oh, I wonder why. Hmm. Well, this is what led to the soil test, and uh, mm. the 8.0 pH. It was too acidic, so the zucchini under protest only made. Male flowers and not oh, one fruit, and no, with three plants, you know. Well, I'll plant two or three, and we'll only have one good one, and you know, yada yada. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, not one zucchini this year. Wow, yeah. that's really interesting. See, now you just taught me something. I had no idea that soil pH would would do that to a zucchini plant. That's very interesting. Well, I have a theory. Like, I'm an enthusiastic amateur. You know way more on this. I mean, I'm learning so much just from being a podcast host. Is my my wife's a master gardener, and she goes, "Oh, we didn't compost enough in this bed." And I thought, "Well, we we you know we bought very expensive soil to put into this bed, which is perfect for flowers, but not the vegetables." Right. <laughs> so, you know, there's a reason why she's the master gardener, and I'm moving the dirt. You know, I know what I know my role in the, in the job here, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the zucchini was terrible. The sunflowers were half the height that they were the year before, and the tomatoes were just gro- like grotesque, like three little pine cone-sized tomatoes on a plant. It just it's always going to be the same. My tomatoes, yeah, my tomatoes are the same way. Yeah. Terrible. For the listeners, can you throw out two or three ways to get rid of extra zucchinis? <laughs> Well, no, I I don't. I mean, get rid of them or use them because I I like to focus on how I can use them. I mean, I give them away to people who if somebody wants them or you know, but I do find that most people don't want them because they have their own. So <laughs> yeah, brown paper bag, ring the doorbell on the doorstep no, and run. It doesn't work. Yeah, because in my neighborhood, everybody knows where they came from. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I, I mean, my favorite ways to use zucchini, um, I, well, I freeze a lot of my vegetables, so I do mixed vegetables into small containers that are easy to heat up for dinner, and those last us most of the winter. And then I also, I love, this year I discovered zucchini spaghetti noodles, and that's my one of my new favorite ways to use up my zucchini, uh, is, is using them for spaghetti noodles, and it's just awesome and then I also have been doing a lot of dehydrating I have a dehydrator that I got last year and so I dehydrate a lot of my zucchini as well which rehydrates really well so man you get along well with my wife she's got the dehydrator going and um, (laughs) because we have so many cherry tomatoes she makes little they're almost like flavor booster packets for spaghetti sauce or bolognese sauce Mm, yum yeah zucchinis well uh, I like the uh Zucchini muffins and zucchini bread. And ever since we went gluten free, it's been a challenge, though. Right. <laughs> I know. I stopped baking too. It's just, it's, it is delicious, but it's not very healthy, I tell you. <laughs> a lot of the listeners, Amy, are pretty new gardeners and they love to hear about mistakes. It's a real bonding moment when, uh, you know, 
a guest comes on the podcast and shares a catastrophic oopsie moment from their gardening career. Do, have you ever done anything so wrong that you can laugh at it now in the garden? Well, I, you know, I don't, I haven't had any major catastrophic mistakes. I think, I think I, um, I, if I'm not sure of something, I, I'm always calling my dad and asking him, what do I do, dad? How do I do this? So nothing majorly catastrophic. I would say, you know, hindsight, I would, uh, I would have put my vegetable garden in a different spot because now that the trees, the neighbor's trees have matured, my vegetable garden is part shade now, so and it's only getting shadier every year. So that would that would be one thing that I would say over time was a huge mistake that I made that I wish I would have thought, okay, well, there's a tree there, and someday that tree is going to be huge, <laughs> even though it's small now. Maybe I should put this vegetable garden over here instead. So that would be one thing I would say is the biggest, biggest mistake I've made. <laughs> okay, very, yeah, it's, it's tough to plan for a tree, I mean. Yeah. When you're 25, you never think you'll be 30. And when you're 40, 50 seems a long way away. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, you have perennial flowers, too. Yes. Uh, would you say you're more in love with your flower garden or your vegetable garden? You know, I need both of them. I, I, if I had to pick between the two, it would be it would be a mix of, of if I only had one garden plot, like I did when I first started or when I was gardening in my dad's garden, I always had a mix of both. So I, I mean, I do, I, I always have to have a mix of perennials, annuals, vegetables, and then I also love to mix tropical plants in there too. So it's definitely a mix. Good answer. It was a test. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <laughs> Which pet do you love the most? Yeah, no, well, right? Yes, yes. <laughs> I can't pick. <laughs> you know, Amy, our time is whipping by, and now is the time in the show when we play everybody's favorite game called Five Quick Questions. This is your chance to share wisdom and experience with novice gardeners. Are you ready to play? Yes. Question number one. In your opinion, what do you think stops most people who don't garden from even trying gardening? Uh, I think the biggest, well, there's a few. I say fear, knowledge, budget, and time. Mm. Yeah, that's something you do really well on your blog is talk about DIY. Yep. DIY and budget budgeting are my biggest focuses because those were my biggest struggles when I first started on my own. If you know anybody who's thinking about gardening, folks, send them over to getbusygardening.com with a notepad and a pen and they'll come away with 10 great ideas for sure uh, question number two what's the best gardening advice that you've ever received um i'd say don't take it don't take it too seriously and just relax and enjoy nice how many kinds of tomatoes did you grow this year i had five plants and i i want to say two Two of them were the same. I can't even remember because I haven't gotten any. <laughs> so I've only gotten one tiny one. So I don't even remember which varieties I grew anymore. <laughs> That's inspiring because we have people who think, you know, you plant three tomatoes, you get three tomatoes. <laughs> and it's not, you know, the math is different. And your 12 years of gardening experience right in that garden. And it's your worst year ever for tomatoes. Oh, I know. I had I had high hopes of uh, tons of. I was going to do tons of canning this year, and that's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> You've cleared away shelf space, and you yep. got the empty jars and rings. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. Save those for next year, I guess. <laughs> Folks, if uh, if you have great tomato photographs, send them to Amy on Twitter at <laughs> Get Busy Gardening, just for inspiration for next year. Yeah, I'll, I'll be drooling over your tomatoes. <laughs> I know you have a lot of friends in the gardening blog community. Can you recommend two or three of your favorite blogs for novice gardeners? Well, obviously, GetBusyGardening.com. <laughs> Absolutely. But if I had to choose ones that were not my own, um, you said blogs, or can they be anything? Anything, yeah. The internet's a big place for gardeners. Well, yeah, and the two that I relied on the most when I first started and that I still go to all the time are Dave's Garden and the Garden Web. Those are the two that I have always relied on the most. Garden Web, yep. Oh, uh, folks, I'll put the links up in the show notes with hyperlinks so you don't have to 
take notes on your iPhone with your thumb. Garden Web. Yeah, gar the Garden Web has great forums, and you can go out there and ask questions and read other people's answers, and 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 that's a really great one for for getting help. And then Dave's Garden is a great resource for any type of plant that you could think of. Uh, what the what the you know what the growing requirements are for sun and 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 uh, watering requirements and everything. So that's a really great one too. Isn't that extraordinary? How generous a community gardening yeah. is. Yeah, it is. It is great. It's amazing. You know, I was chatting with a friend the other day in uh, San Diego. And I said, what zone are you? He goes, 10A. And I go, 10A? And he goes, yeah, we grow bananas. And I go, you're like, they don't have water, but they have uh, <laughs> any, it's sunshine all the time. Yeah. Right. Everybody has their challenges. But yeah, can you imagine <laughs> being able to grow bananas outside? <laughs> I'll think of them in February, and uh, <laughs> but you know, try you if you don't know what's going to grow in your zone, and you plant the wrong thing, mm -hmm. is it any wonder? Right. Uh, books. Question number four, Amy. Can you recommend a, a favorite gardening book? Uh, well, I'd say for for somebody just starting out, I'd say two of the books that I love the most that I refer to all the time: uh, "Good Bug, Bad Bug" by Jessica Walser is a really great one. Um, just over the last few years, I've, I've really gotten into, um, gotten into trying to, trying to identify different bugs in my garden and knowing that the, you know, that bugs are so important because so many people just, as soon as they see any bug, they want to kill it and spray pesticides and just understanding. It's so important to understand that bugs are, are very important in your garden. And, and, um, so this book, this book is great. You can take it out to the garden with you. It helps you identify different bugs that you see. So, you know, good ones versus bad ones. And then I also have to say the the second, a second one is the year round vegetable garden gardener by uh, Nikki Jabor. That's a really great one for learning how to extend your growing season when you, if you live in a cold climate. So using cold frames and, and other things to be able to grow vegetables outside year round is really interesting and really a really a fun, fun referenced book as well. I'm going to piggyback on that. My wife bought Nikki's book and about three days later, there's a chapter on figs with Stephen Biggs. Uh -huh. And she went and bought a fig. I go, what is that? She goes, it's a fig tree. I go, what do we do with it? <laughs> Except <Call> Stephen Biggs. <laughs> I did. So I interviewed him on the podcast. <laughs> That's and great. Goes, well, you got to take it in every winter. And I go, what? <laughs> what? Like, where am I going to put a tree? <laughs> so now I have to clean the garage. And oh boy, yeah. yeah. No, it's okay. It's <laughs> <laughs> my golf clubs will go in the shed, and the fig will go where my golf clubs used to be. <laughs> That's great. But it has a promise of an upside is eating in the eating the fruit next year. Yeah. That'll be really fun. Oh, um if, listeners, if you've never heard Nikki's podcast, she does a Sunday radio show from Halifax and they archive the episodes. So if you search Nikki Jabour uh radio show, you can get a, a reminder every Sunday and you can tune in live on the web and listen to her talk to gardeners from all over live on the radio it's really cool technology yes we were actually on the radio show last week we um jessica walser nikki jabor tara nolan and i um i actually started a blog earlier this year called savvygardening.com and we uh we joined together on that and so on sat on sunday we were on nikki's show on the radio talking about talking about that so that's that was really fun cool yeah do you ladies have a podcast yet no, we don't. We've been kicking around the idea, but we're also very busy right now. But maybe this winter we'll we'll be able to figure something out. Three women talking at the same time about gardening. <laughs> There's actually four of us. Four. Oh yeah. yeah. Yes. <laughs> hey, we have are... fun together too. Sometimes we get off topic and and uh, go down different roads, so it's fun. You could do the there's the long version podcast like Joe Rogan does. They just talk for three hours, <laughs> <laughs> blow off the whole day, but they they cover a lot of content. Yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of which, I better get back to my outline. Question five. This one's a fun one, and I'll give it to you as a two parter. What's the part A is what's the number one thing that you think every gardener should try to grow next year, or What's one thing that you're just itching to experiment with next season? Well, I think every gardener should grow their own food. I mean, it's 
it, it sounds scary, and I hope that I didn't put you off with my story about my bummer tomatoes this year, but every gardener should definitely try growing food. Start with easy food like beans and peas, you know, just stuff that's super easy to grow from seed and that will give you a lot of food, and you'll, you'll be hooked as soon as you see that it can be really easy and, and, uh, and fun. And then the one thing I want to experiment with, I don't know. I didn't really think about that one. Um, you don't have to answer. Okay. <laughs> you can pass. I think, yeah, I, I, I don't really have anything on my list off the top of my head that I can think of. I'm not going to be growing any fig, any figs, because I don't have any room to put them. I have enough indoor plants as it is. <laughs> if I could give you a wild suggestion. Sure. We, My wife found a... a through rareseeds.com from Baker Creek, a spinach called Malabar spinach. Oh. And it said, yeah, it grows about four feet high, like a vine. So we made a little teepee in a uh, three-by-three garden bed. And we planted one in each corner, figuring it would go up these little stakes of the teepee and have a little raise, you know, a little vertical. They grew six or seven feet long. Oh, my gosh. And they made spinach leaves as big as my head, and I have a rather large cranium. Wow. And sturdy, and uh, it finished up in mid-August. We got spinach all season. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. I'm writing, I wrote that one down. I'm definitely going to check that one out. And uh, if you, you know, Malabar. And who knew? This is one of the things I love is just trying new stuff in the garden. Right. Yep. I always try. I always try something new every year as well. But I usually don't know what it's going to be until I start looking at seeds. <laughs> Very good. You know, Amy, you've been an incredible guest. Let's make sure we send all of our listeners over to your Twitter feed at Get Busy Gardening. So there's no G on the end because Twitter made it too short. <laughs> and your awesome blog slash resource website at www.getbusygardening.com. Make sure you share Amy's stuff on social media. Show her that you're... Uh, can listeners send you uh, questions or reach out to you? Yeah, oh, yes, absolutely. I get questions all the time on my Facebook page, through Twitter, and then also on the blog itself on comments. So absolutely, I love getting... And I get emails sometimes from people, too. So I love getting questions and, and having you know getting to know people, too. So it's fun. Dynamite. Amy, I want to give you the last word to the listeners today. Do you have either a note of encouragement or a pearl of wisdom to leave them with on their gardening adventures? Yeah, I think that the biggest thing is getting started with gardening. You know, my biggest biggest concern when I first started gardening was that I didn't have any money. I was a poor college student. And then when I bought my first house, I was house poor. So I didn't have any money. Um, I and But, you know, I didn't let that stop me. I figured out ways that I could grow you know, vegetables or grow, you know, flowers on my, on a budget, tight, tight budget, different ways to do things myself, digging in the dirt with a shovel versus, you know, rather than hiring somebody to do it. So there are tons of ways that you can garden on a budget. It doesn't have to be expensive and it doesn't have to be scary. And I, I'm constantly trying to share different ideas and ways of getting started gardening on a budget doing it yourself all of those things on my blog that's that's what I focus on so yeah so just just have fun and enjoy it and and uh, it doesn't have to be expensive so fantastic brilliant Amy you're a fantastic guest thanks for being on the show thanks thanks Dave <laughs> 